Well, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Recording for you on a very special day. I just got back from playing golf with my best friend, Sinister Gates, who had his 53rd birthday today. <laughs> Um, no, not really. Uh, but yeah, he, it was his birthday today. We're recording today on a Friday, July 7th. So happy birthday to my brother, Brian Sinister Gates. Um, yeah, we just, we just got off of playing 18 holes. That's why I've got, you know, if you're on YouTube right now, you got this nice fun shirt that I'm wearing. Um, Are you the best dressed person there? I'm always the best dressed person on the golf course. Minus your hat. What are you talking about? I was wearing a different hat. I wore this hat specifically for our guest today. Ah, so we'll get we'll, to that one. We'll get to uh, that in a minute. Hey, do you guys get each other gifts? You and the bandmates? Uh, we used to. I don't know. I th I feel like I feel like all my friends we used to give each other gifts when we were like in our twenties and stuff. But I feel like once, like after thirty, you just stop giving your friends gifts. At least guys and stuff. I don't know. Well, when you can Maybe buy your own, whatever you want. It's like unless it's something that's specific to that person. You're like, oh, I gotta get you this. But then you just buy it randomly, right? You don't right. Do it for like if something thing. I come across makes me think of that person and it happens to be close enough to their birthday, sure, I'll I'll exchange a gift. But most part, it's just you spend time together. You go out on the golf course like I did today. You go get dinner. You go do whatever. You just spend time with each other. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the. That's, that's how I do it these days. I mean, you and I don't exchange birthday gifts. No, I'm not a birthday guy, really. Like, <clears throat> my wife, you know, Karen, she she likes to do something every year. I don't think I even did anything last year. I think I just went out with the family. And even on my 40th was, I had grand ideas. And then when it gets close, I'm like, eh, I don't really want to do anything. It's like <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it every time. Like, yeah, was, uh, throw a big old party, do something like that. It's like, why do I want to spend my time doing that? That's a... It's a pain for me. Like well, I have see, to do all the work. Right. The, and then you got to clean it and you got to live in it afterwards or yeah, it's I don't like know. you got to go. Maybe you go somewhere and have it like all taken care of. So you can just walk in, walk out. Maybe we'll do something like that for our 40th. I don't know. My wife wants to celebrate stuff all the time. As I'm sure, you know, and you know, she's, we're both coming up on our 40th birthday, which is, you know, literally a couple of years away here, less than a couple of years ago, way now. Damn. And, uh, our birthdays are right next to each other, so we usually do some kind of joint thing, but I don't know. We'll see. Well, I like her idea of doing a destination with just some friends and stuff. I'm on board for that. I mean, I'm always on board for something like that, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyways, happy Friday. Happy weekend, happy everybody. Well, now by the time everyone hears this, it's not going to be the weekend anymore. They're going to be Happy Monday, today. everybody. Or happy Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday, whatever day that we release this on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they got to follow, Sam. That's why I keep repeating, you got to follow, not just wait till you see a post on Instagram or Twitter or wherever else we're posting stuff. You're going to want to follow on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast because we're not even sure when we're going to release our episodes. It's just whenever we're ready, whenever they're ready. Let's put it that it's way. It's craziness. Johnny's getting ready for touring out for all you events fans. We got a lot yeah. behind the scenes. So I'm going to be so leaving, much good stuff. I'm going to be leaving on the 16th. I'll be on, um, and then I'll be gone for a while, and I'm really looking forward to it, living on the bus, as we talked about on Friday's episode. But yeah, yeah really fun stuff. You know, we got a great guest today, an old friend. So I told you about him being an old friend before, and you're like, I didn't realize that. And I was like, yeah. LJ, from, the singer from Seven Dust, LeJohn. Um, yeah, so he's going to be on the show here in a minute. We're waiting for him to uh, hop into the Zoom call and have a little chat about their upcoming release of a new record after three years and a tour that they got with our other friends in Alter Bridge. So uh, we got some fun stuff to talk about with LJ and reminiscence. I, I, was, I even went back after we talked on Friday, Sam, mm -hmm. and I wanted to find if I could see what the name of the tour was or when it was or anything like that that we toured together on. We did a couple things together. We did like a... It was either a mayhem or taste of chaos or something like that for a little while. And then we also did Europe for a while together. So I hope LJ has a better memory than I do of the, I think everybody's got it. anything that comes to time or things like that with your band. I, you, you do have some good knowledge, but it's funny how like things like touring or who was what, when I feel like that's when it gets spotty and it blends together for you where we got to do a little research sometimes for you. <laughs> Man, it's, I but mean, you live such I, a great life. I can't life. even that's make it. an excuse though. I mean, I'm, 
if LJ does know more than me, I can't use the excuse that like, well, I've been doing this for a long time because oh, LJ has so. been doing it for a hell of a lot longer than I have. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. So prepping for this, I I really enjoyed A, the new album. I think it's great. I mean, he's got mm. one of the best voices in rock music. I agree. Voices, period. Like he's got such a range and can do anything. Uh, but I forgot how long they've been in the game. And that's why Seven Dust is who they are. I mean... They always walk the line, at least, I don't know what you were, I mean, they've been around before you were in Avenged, right? So, oh, yeah. uh, I remember liking them because they flirted with the metal side, but they also kind of had the grunge rock roots where it was a little bit, it was a little bit of everything in, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And I just have always been a fan. So, yeah, I mean, even after I listened to the new record, I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a lot of time to live with it, obviously, because we just got it yesterday. Um, uh, but yeah, I thought there's, there's some great songs on there. And then, uh, I went back and listened to a, uh, you know, you, on Apple, it's like the top most popular songs or whatever. And I listened to a couple of those and I was like, oh yeah, that was them. You know, it's been a while since I went back and listened to the seven dust catalog. There's some great songs back there. Like Denial is like the number one of their famous one from all the way back from 1999. So it's like, it's, and I remember watching that on, they had a music video for that on uh, MTV too, when I, you know, before I joined the band and stuff, before I joined Avenged. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was a fan. I also saw them, they had a performance in like Austin, Texas or something like that, that they, that they put on MTV too. I want to ask him if he remembers about, it was a really cool it was just a, it was a live concert, but I, the way I remember watching it, I, I can't remember if it was like an MTV special thing that they were doing. Um, I think it was cause we eventually did one, uh, from the Soma as well on MTV too years later. But if I remember correctly, that it was on MTV too. So I want to ask him about that. You did oh, a live that, one for MTV too? Yeah, we did oh. a live one. Um, at, at San Diego. That's kind of fun. Yeah. The Soma in San Diego. I've never been there. I got to check that one out. Are you guys, you guys yeah. are playing again on this tour, right? Playing San Diego, uh, Chula Vista. Chula Vista. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what the date is, but yeah, it's coming up on this. I think it's on this, the second leg of the, of the North American tour. Hey, so did you get a chance to check out that fences video or did you not yes. have time? Yes, Dude, of course I did. I, I love that video. Love, I can't wait to ask him about that. I know. Yeah, that was, so they have like the three singles out right now. I don't know if they all came out together or which one came out first, but fence, out of the three, I think is my favorite song and music video out of the three. Um, there's some other great songs, though, as I said, on the record that people are going to be privy to yet when they listen to this. But they will be on July 28th, I believe, is the uh, release date. July 28th. And then they have a tour with, uh, we'll get it all done at the top of the show. They got a tour with Alter Bridge coming up, as we kind of mentioned. And then mm -hmm. also they announced uh, touring with uh, Static X. Oh, that's right. And, uh, and Dope. So oh, dope! So uh, that another, too. Yeah, oh, fantastic! Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I I keep reading things because Etzel was on the show, and I never asked him about the Static X stuff. But like a lot of people are saying that he's doing Static X too. So I don't know if he's double dipping or what. But like all I know is Etzel was a great guest. So another friend, yeah. and now they're you know they're doing the thing with Alter Bridge, other friends there. So it's it's a it's a community thing, and it looks like LJ's here. So let's fantastic. bring him on in. All right, is that cool? Oh, that's more than cool, buddy. How are you? Right, I'm good. How you doing, brother? I'm good. It's been too long, man. It's definitely been way too long, and thank you for taking the time to do this. I think this is definitely uh, probably the coolest thing that I've done in a long time to be able to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, the pleasure is all mine for you coming on the show. Thank you for taking the time, man. Uh, I was telling uh, the audience and my co-host Sam over here, um, on Friday's podcast, well, I know we're recording on a Friday, Cat's Out of the Bag, all that already, but we released one this morning, too. We were talking about you coming on the show, um, and I mentioned, I was like, I don't remember how long ago it was, but we did a couple of tours together. We did, like, a, one of the festival yes. tours together, and then we went to Europe together as well. And for the life yes. of me, I know it was uh, been at least what, 10 years ago, right? Yes, absolutely. I'll tell you, I remember you guys had the set... Uh, in the states that we toured with you guys with and uh you had the the mansion that looked like a haunted mansion that i love to watch you guys perform every night so you remember that set you had yeah that was that's kind of the gates with the gates and everything i'm pretty sure that was nightmare. yes i was right i did yeah. say it was, oh, well, yes, nightmare it was a nightmare yes oh my god man thank you guys for having us on that run 
it was amazing. And I, I've been waiting to go back on tour with y'all ever since. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll make that happen again sometime soon, yeah. man. Cause that was, I remember having a blast, man. I mean, you guys were, were always hanging out. We were, you know, after, mm -hmm. after the show and stuff, I, Morgan was around more than anyone else out, out of seven dust, but I don't know yeah. if that's still the case, but we, we definitely got some time to hang on that tour and I have fond memories of that. And, and then, as, like as I mentioned in Europe, I remember there was several times we were we were in uh, smaller clubs for that. I, I, I believe, and, yeah, uh, smaller. The smaller rooms. I don't know if they're quite clubs, but there are smaller rooms for that. And I was able to come out and watch you guys on that one a little bit more than the festival ones. You know, the festival ones, you guys mm -hmm. get to go find the stage and everything like that. And you're kind of doing your yeah, absolutely. So you get to see a lot of the performances from you guys. But in Europe, I was able to catch quite a few of the sets, man. I was. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a fan, man. I have been for a long time. <laughs> Well, thank you, man, as well as us. Uh, the same here. I love you guys and what you do. And I wanted to tell you, too, uh, uh, out on this last uh, run, uh, back in the back lounge of the bus, we were out there for about two and a half weeks. We were able to check out some of the new songs and some of the new album. And I love everything that you guys are doing and the growth, the uh, the avenues that you guys are taking. It's, it's incredible. So congratulations on that, brother. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> Speaking of new records, though, I and just growth, got... I feel like this one's kind of... A little new sounds on it too for you guys right oh yeah you know we i think you know man sam and uh johnny due to that pandemic and us being kind of tied up uh and not being able to do the things that we were normally able to do i think we were able to kind of focus that energy into this album and and almost kind of predicting the the outcome of the way we wanted to bounce and move the crowd and uh and set the temperature in these places that we're going to be playing and so i think we we're able to kind of guide it and we had time to paint this point with this truth killer album and i'm very happy about that dude I, I i i can contest like i listened to it we haven't had a lot of time to listen to it i just got the mm -hmm. record yesterday so well, i'm not like I, I i probably can't go down track by track with, at least oh, with yeah. the titles and stuff but me either I, I could do it with my phone a little bit <laughs> you, either, you can't do it either <laughs> can't do it at all so let me tell you you laugh, you laugh at me and it's true so today man I, my, my publicist set me up uh, so I removed myself from the album after we record, and I like to listen to it when it comes out in debuts or whatever, unless I'm having right. forced to learn a song that we put in the set. Uh, but today I did some uh, podcast in Canada, and it was called, uh, what was it, Dissecting? And I was like, that's weird. What's that mean? And he said, they didn't tell you. And I was like, no. He said, we're going to go down each song, and you're going to tell me about every song on the new album from front to back. And I was like, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good setup i love well that. i'm glad they prepped you for us so now you're all ready you know, you're yeah. all fresh now, on now you've already done it so you should be a little exactly. some of those memories had to have come back now right exactly man but it was funny when he asked that uh but yes yeah, it's, 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 it's a good thing man and i'm just glad that uh we were able to get this album under our belt and things are back to normal a little bit and we're getting ready to go out on these tours and and uh the energy is uh it is there's a contagious energy in the air not the bad contagious energy we had before but a new <laughs> <laughs> a feeling of like before you know when the kids were outside at the shows early and and you know knowing they're not going to see us until 9 30 or 10 o'clock at night but they're there uh, you know in the a.m and it's just uh it's just it's the feeling that it should be where we can uh, take their minds away from the bills and the problems at home for that hour that two hours however long we're out there so uh, i'm happy to be back a part of it again hell yeah man that's what it's all about it has been great yes, going back to shows and uh man i mean we were we were away from it for five years. We were we were ahead of the curve, you know. I we were trendsetters. We got off the road before yeah. COVID got everyone else off the road. So uh, exactly, yeah. But we just got back, and it does feel good, man, just to see your fans again, even however long it is you're, when you're mm -hmm. away from it, you know. And uh, I I can absolutely concur with you on that, man. Seeing the kids just like that still line up, still wait, still uh, like yeah. they make a day out of it. They make they make you know they make weeks out of it. They talk about yeah. it for weeks coming up, and yeah. sometimes longer. And it's it's a beautiful thing that we're able to do this for, you know, for mm -hmm. ourselves and for them. You know, it's really just a community community vibe Ab out there, right? Absolutely. And um, besides that, you know, after a while, I start looking at the wife, and she's like, "Yes, yeah, about time for you guys to get back out there, huh? Don't you think?" <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> "Yes, man." John's wife said that to him for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do anything. Like at first, she was like, "Hey, it's getting long," and then like I was like, "I know, I know." And then the pandemic, and I said, "It's about to get a little longer." Like, <laughs> yeah, it started. It started getting weird when I go to my favorite my favorite spot, Sunset Grill. And you go in there, and all my old friends are at the corner of knowledge are looking at me like, "Man, you still in that band?" I'm like. 
Yeah. <laughs> we're st- yeah, we're still in the band, man. Sorry. <laughs> Such a good question, though, sometimes when people don't know. You guys, uh, you guys still doing stuff? It's like, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a loaded question right now. You yeah. know, like, yes, but no, because yeah. no one's really doing anything. So I don't, oh, know, yeah. I don't know how to answer that, buddy. Exactly. And then you always have, you have that one guy that comes through and it's like, Hey man, you still, you still in that little band? I'm like, yeah, we're still in that little band. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> that are a little band on top of <laughs> a little it. Band. Yeah. Yeah. That little band that's been doing it since, yeah. since the early nineties. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. I like, yeah. It's, but that's the same guy that thinks I'm getting ready to get on stage and perform at Sunset Grill too. So it's like, <laughs> 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 you know, one, so hey, one of these times you just got to surprise him with yeah. something. You just got to surprise him with something one of yeah. these days. Karaoke Absolutely, night. man. It's, he's too. They're too far gone. They don't. They never understand. <laughs> All right, what you drinking there? Uh, this is a kombucha, actually, right now. Uh, you, you're you making me it? feel bad. Oh, I love kombucha, but they said that you're supposed to have a beer or something. What's it? But I came prepared. And this beer thirty, so I was gonna say cheers to you. Oh well, I could still cheers with this. I'm actually uh, on the wagon for for a little while. I just had to take a break after the fourth. Well, good. Well, hey, <laughs> well, I get it. That's awesome. So, so you have a, I've heard you mention on some stuff. So you see Johnny's bar in the back there. Yes. I hear you got a bar. Are you in the bar right now that I hear about all I'm the time? Actually in, yeah, I'm in my bar at my house. I'm not in the man cave. I'm in my bar. And this is, this is like a museum of really, I, I consider myself, I made this word up. I'm a man teaker. And so, uh, I collect really odd old things uh, as far as, let's see what's in here right now. There's a globe that, if you remember, I don't know if it's the 1930s, whatever, when the uh, the bulb, light bulb was invented or whatever. So this globe right here is the first globe that has a light bulb actually on the inside of it. Oh. So that's, that's a real old piece. But this something's really cool. This, on my 50th birthday from last year, two of my best friends, Johnny Dare, one of my radio DJ buddies, they presented me with this in a, at a surprise birthday party. Pure steel, they had it made. And it reads, a man's friendship are one of his best measures of his worth. Happy 50th, LJ. And uh, there's a picture of my buddies and us on a motorcycle ride. But that is a 50 caliber, actual desert storm, 50 caliber gun. Uh, and it's wow. gold. It's the anniversary. That's awesome. <laughs> So that kind of stuff is in here. And then, you know, from over across, excuse me, we just got back from vacation. But that's yeah. all the coins from all the chiefs from around the world. And then, you know, it's just all kind of crazy stuff in here. That uh, Actually, Ben from Breaking Benjamin over there, there's a, uh, a damn lightsaber that he gave me that I have over here. <laughs> a lightsaber? <laughs> yeah, that Ben gave me. He was, he was performing with it. Uh, we went, I think me and the wife went to Nebraska or somewhere to go see a show. And I love Star Wars and... and I didn't realize that they, he was such a fan until I saw the show and, and he had the lightsaber and a drum set had all the helmets and stuff on it. And as we were walking to the back uh, backstage with them after the show, I looked at him and I said, listen, I saw all that stuff you got up there. I said, I know you got more than one of those in that damn semi back there. Give me one of them. And sure enough, he said, get LJ one of those. <laughs> 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 and I'm, uh, I've had it ever since. <laughs> so that's, it's kind of like your room. You know, you know, you have little fun things that you, oh, that you have in here. Like, yeah, I have yeah. this right here. I keep this in a box. It's uh, the actual Grammy nominated. Actually, after you go to the Grammys and you don't win the damn Grammy, oh, they, they give, give you just a little. The necklace? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at this thing. Yeah, you know, I know you do. <laughs> I'm like, good, good, Neither good, one of us have the other trophies. one. I, and I didn't show up. Did you actually show up? Yeah, we went, man. I took the wife and everything, but could it be a little bit bigger? I mean, what the yeah, hell? Man. I've got bigger, no, I've, got bigger I've got bigger uh ribbons and, and medals from running like the half marathon here in Huntington <laughs> Beach. So I'm like, come on, guys. In third grade, I think my second place medal was bigger than this damn thing, right? <laughs> 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 no, you know what, man? We actually I had the opportunity to take my family. And uh, a couple of my best friends. Uh, and the, the thing about it for me was, as, as, as a kid growing up, watching the Grammys was something that, you know, was fingernail biting at the end of the table or at the end of the couch and watching some of the celebrities that you knew that you would never, ever see in a million years. Because at one point in time, you probably didn't have the money back then or the means or your parents damn sure weren't going to let you go to a concert like that by yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, it was a really cool opportunity for me and my wife to be sitting there and i was 
one seat away from Stevie Wonder and his family. And I was like, just, mm. I'm done. You know, you can put a fork in me. I don't even have to care. We have to go to get the presentation. But it was a fun, it was a fun experience. And uh, I had my good buddy, James Shields, uh, the pitcher. And uh, we, you know, did the Grammys thing. We didn't win it. The band Ghost won it. It was fun to watch. I remember my wife, it was all quiet. And, you know, of course, when you go to the Grammys, I didn't realize that they had so many different categories. I mean, it was a, a Jamaican tap dance and gospel, I don't know, area that somebody won an award for. It was like, what? Yeah, and it's hours, hours upon hours. Uh, I've uh, heard that. I luckily heard that through the grapevine when we got nominated a few yeah. years back. And I was like, that just doesn't, it was a mess. That's, it doesn't sound like it a lot a of mess. fun to wait through. Yeah. But, you know, it was an experience and, you know, the family got to do it and we were right across the street. Yeah. But after that went down, you know, it was really cool. And to, then to see the actual televised part was real fun. But uh, after the Grammys, me and James Shields were getting ready to go back up to the hotel with our wives and the kids and stuff to uh, to hang out and have a little after party. Ran into Tech Nine, a good buddy of mine, a neighbor, and uh, he was hanging out with us. And uh, they said, man, it's a Grammy party. Why don't you guys just go to it? And I looked at James and said, ah, I really don't want to go to that party, you know, whatever. And he looked at me and said, you know what, man? I said that, like, you know, when we did the World Series and all that stuff. And he said, what if I never had the chance to do a World Series again? He said, what if you never have the chance to be at this opportunity again? And I said, yeah, you're right. Let's go to the party. Yeah. And we went to the party. And it turned out to be one of the coolest uh, little after parties. Of course, it was Hollywood. So everything was really over the top. It was, uh, uh, what do you call it, Alice in Wonderland thing. And so when you walked in, there were people on stilts up to the fucking ceiling uh, uh, riding unicycles and everything was free and there's a, a layout of free bags of stuff and, and then it was overwhelming because everybody was there and I was having a good time and on the, you could see the stage in the very back and you could see this lady singing and the song sounded familiar and as you got closer you realize it was a freaking lady from 1972 and she was singing, I will survive. I'm not another man of love. I know I will survive. And it was her. It was no way. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, that. Is, it's that lady. Oh my God. People were dancing and losing their minds. Who Stars were everywhere. That's somebody, it's that's someone that we should know their name. I got to look it up now. Yeah. I, that's someone I, I know. I should know who it is. Yeah, exactly. I can't remember her name, but you know, that night, it was just a special night and it, it would definitely be something I never forget now. It was an experience that, uh, that I'll, t I'll keep dear to my heart, man. It was, it was Gloria fun. Gaynor. So. Gloria yes, Gaynor. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> was there, I mean, it was incredible. It was like that was it was a real it was a real deal. It was a, a, a spectacular party. And uh, I ate, got stuff for free. And on the way out, there's a semi uh, like for a commercial. And it was an actual commercial for McDonald's. And you could lay in the bed, and they would give you an egg McMuffin, and it was your chance to be. In. I don't know. It was crazy. I didn't do that part. Oh, I was going to say, did, is, there, is, there a, is there a cameo of yeah, LJ right. out in a McDonald's commercial we need oh, to find? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I would have had, had two more shots of Jaeger, you might have seen me in a McDonald's commercial. <laughs> Ooh, Jaeger. Grammys and Jaeger. That definitely. I could, I can imagine. We, I, I have gone to a couple of the after parties, um, just because mm -hmm. it's not too far. And uh, even right. before we were nominated and stuff, we get invited yeah. by like you know the label to go out there and mm -hmm. see what we, what could have been if we listened to them. Just kidding. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> nah, it's I love all fun. It. I love, I love that. So you mentioned though, a uh, mutual friend of ours. I, I, you're obviously closer to him, but. Uh, Tech Nine was on the show too, and the uh, I know I know you boys. That's why I had to wear my uh, silver and black here. I know you. I know you guys are uh, diehard Chiefs fans. Yeah, man, we 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 Chiefs up in here, but man, I love your boys too. I'm a football fan. People, yeah, Tech, yeah, he's a he's cool, man. Actually, my wife uh, sold our best friends uh, Tech Nine's old place to our best friends, so it's really cool. Uh, Oh. And you get to see, I see Tech every once around around town every once in a while, you know, when we're not too busy. But he just had that beautiful baby so bad right now. <laughs> Can you repeat that? You I said, baby. yeah, Tech, I said, I, I see him every once in a while around town, but I hadn't seen him lately. He just had a new baby, so he's being a daddy right now. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw him posted about that. Mm -hmm. about yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got two kids too, right? You seem like a family man from from what I, I hear. Oh, yeah, I, got, I have three. I have an adult. Three. Yeah, I have a uh, a fifteen year old, and then I have a six year old, and uh, we just got back off a month family vacation. We started in Orlando for the listening party, uh, and then stayed at a spot in the villages, and then went to Panama City Beach for about a week, and then came home for twenty four hours, and then hit the lake, 
So you had to take out some toys before we shut everything down. And I just got back home on Sunday. So, yeah, we have, you know, and I look at it. We, we learned about it like this. Uh, with that pandemic, everything slowed life down so fast. And all of a sudden, my daughter uh, that was in the eighth grade or seventh grade when the pandemic hit, went back to school and she's in high school and driving a car and has a job now. that She only works three days out of the week. But uh, I look at it like we only have 18 summers with these kids before they feel like they're adults. And, uh, and when I really put it in that perspective, I was like, oh, shit, I really need to and uh, utilize this time that I have at home because normally when it gets back busy with the band, it'll be busy again. And uh, those those days seem to get shorter and shorter as they get older. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely taking the most, I'm making the most of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Man, it's summertime right now and I got a six-year-old who's sitting in, sitting in the other room. I, I got I to gotta stop this podcast. I got to go spend time with them. You just made me think about that. <laughs> <Exactly>. seasons. <laughs> And, I, and if you did it, I would understand it completely, man. You got a, you got a, you got a six year old man. That's demanding. Little man is probably running the house too. Is a boy or girl? Boy. Oh, he's running the house, man. Oh, what yeah. a, what a beautiful thing, and it changes your life, man. Those kids and and watching them grow and everything is uh, it, it definitely puts a soft spot in us, man. That I that I wouldn't change for anything, man. I I, I die for those little boogers. Dude, for sure. And having that <laughs> pandemic, like, I'm so glad you, you have a different perspective on it too, but like, you're right. Like that, that slowing down actually, like, I feel like it brought a lot of families closer together. Right. And, and put a lot of that shit into perspective. And for Man. me, I had those five years, you know, almost six years mm -hmm. of time off because pandemic happened in the middle of the time off for us, mm -hmm. uh, that I was able to take my son to school, sports, all that kind of shit. Like, do, like, the normal dad stuff. that Man. Like, I know, like, probably people would take for granted, but, like, you and I know, LJ, yeah. I would be able to do that shit if I was in a normal cycle. Man, I got chill bumps. And I knew the other reason that I was going to, like, enjoy this so much is because we have that in common not only the music side, but the realness, the fatherhood, the marriage, the ups and downs of how the wives feel when we're gone for too long and then us being home for too long. But mm -hmm. that is the truth that, man, it got, it got us closer. It, You know what? I said the normalcy of us being at home was definitely not normal. That us being at home with this time off is being home normal, man. I mean, it definitely changed everything for me taking my son to football practice, for me being there for the first day of freaking school when you're never able to do that kind of stuff, you know. Right. You have to kind of weigh what's what all right, what can I what can, when can I fly in? Is it gonna make sense to fly in for this special day or can we pass it? Can Doc Brian, our family doctor, take her to the daddy daughter dance again this year? You know, because wow. I, you know what I mean? So yeah. I understand, man. So that the, the good side of that pandemic was, yeah, we were, we were up in here, man. We put an arcade in our house that I think that was a stupid idea. Now, cause I hadn't seen those kids down there in freaking a year, it seems like, but anyway, <laughs> you know, that was, that no, no, was no, no. Fun. Now it's your arcade. Yeah, no, exactly. Now it's your yeah. arcade. That's what I see in that. It's fine. <laughs> Sometimes I just go downstairs and just turn all the games on and go into the other room and just listen to the background. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, but like you said, it definitely brought it closer, man. And it, and it brought me and the wife closer together. Uh, and just to be able to do those things that we're never able to do, you sit home and watch a movie and think about, oh, man, I could do this next week, too, and not have to worry about thinking about watching that movie next week, but knowing that next week I'm going to be thinking about going on the tour that I'm leaving with in another week. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it really made, I, I, I know Sam can contest this too, because we've been talking about it. it, it like, mm -hmm. Not only is that like the perspective gets thrown around, everyone talks about you get a new perspective, but in mm -hmm. that there's like, there's like a daily perspective, right? Where you actually like learned, we all had to force ourselves to learn to like stop working for like at one point of the day because otherwise yeah. we'd be on our phones all fucking day and all night you know and be like what's going, on? what's going on what's going on what's going on it's like wait a minute i can actually set this shit down mm -hmm. none of it is that urgent like it'll still be there tomorrow right i mean Absolutely. sam you and i've talked about he's got a he's got a nine to five job he just one of my friends that you know just kind of came on and started doing the show with me you know, awesome. behind the scenes and we we're mm -hmm. like Hey, we're having fun with this. Let's keep going. Now he's co-hosting and having to juggle all that. So I, mean, I know you could talk about that, Sam. Well, just social media in general or anything, like we're so tied to it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're doing it for work. And then on our off time, all we're doing is staring at it. And the break from what? it is what? Going for a walk or watching TV instead of your phone. Like it's just, After, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. But, but the family of getting out of the house, I, you know, Kevin, you know, 
cheers to Kevin, your, your publicist, mm-hmm. great guy. Uh, but hearing that you have all your family stuff and we can attest, we're very family mm-hmm. oriented. We hang out all yes. the time with our families together and just hearing mm-hmm. you taking some time and, and, you know, uh, he's like, Oh, maybe, you know, he can squeeze it in. I'm like, no, no, no. You do your family stuff because that oh. is so critical that, I mean, I don't know how your kids are, what they're into with the YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff, but it's just, it's so addicting to them too. You got to like, oh. Hey, time out. Oh man. Take. It's it, in this house. Well, so the youngest, well, I guess my daughter, she looks at it too. It's a limit definitely on that little one. He'll come downstairs and be like, can I watch some YouTube? And I'll say about five minutes of it. I'm like, what you going to watch though? And he's like, I'm not going to watch anything inappropriate. And I'll let him watch it. And I'll kind of walk by and I'll see some young teenage girl twerking or something. I'm like, look, man. He's like, I didn't know she was going to do that. <laughs> yeah, you they did. It's twerking right on the description. <laughs> 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 learn how to twerk. <laughs> so you I, mean, I don't blame him though. How, how old? How old is he? He's six. He's a little player too, man. Ah, He's awesome. Okay, yeah. okay. But you know, you yeah, so you know, we got to keep a hold on yeah, that social media thing. You know, that goes back to this album Truth Killer that we did. And over that break, if you look at the album cover, you see a child looking at that TV, and it's just mm-hmm. an empty screen. And it's what are we feeding them? And it's anything, you know, it's whatever they're. The, the, people are believing what what they're being fed and uh that's something that we've been learning and i feel like uh there's so many truth killers out there and that's the reason why this album i think is so it's going to hit a lot of pe- people uh, and a lot of people say what does truth killer mean it's, i said there's so many i said your uber driver can be a truth killer your freaking mailman could be a truth killer the next door neighbor could be a truth killer you know uh and so it's just a, a play on words and i think a lot of people will get it once they hear the album from the front to the end uh they'll understand yeah, man, I'm glad you I'm glad you segued into that because I still wanted to talk some more about the record, I, uh, specifically about that song "Truth Killer." Uh, I, I found it interesting. It's the it's the title track uh, on the record, and then I wanted to ask because you got you got "Fence," "Everything," and "Holy Water," right? Are the yeah. three singles out right now? So, yeah. On those three, did you release those three all together, or have they been released a little bit? At a time. A little separately. So uh, the first track, uh, I Might Let the Devil Win, which is a very out of the box for Seven Dust to release something that's slow, people think. But uh, to me, it's one of our heavier songs, the way the production and the setup of the song. Uh, and I feel like at the point of our career right now, we're not afraid to not always have to be, oh, I don't, we're not afraid of, oh, you guys are not heavy or buggy, man. It don't sound like D.S.I. <laughs> we don't want to fucking sound like D.S.I. Get out of here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm talking no, I about. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jay. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> the fans have opinions about what we should sound no, like. Oh, I have no I, I've never heard this. This is new uh, no, information. It's- it's like you guys should sound the exact same for the rest of your lives. Do not evolve or grow or do anything. But not everyone's like that. It's just, you know, a handful of them that are just like, you know, still wearing the shirt from the first concert that you ever did. And that's where they're stuck. And I still hey, love those. I still love them. Still love them. Just yeah. want to say, yeah, yeah. We still love yeah. them. And we're glad that they're still there. And they still have the fucking shirt. Like, no, exactly. no doubt. No doubt. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but they'll be like, F you if you think I'm going to wear a shirt from 2020, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, that wasn't even really on my radar, man. I'm just happy you're still here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. So it's funny. You know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Uh, but uh, it was it was fun uh, to to pick the songs for the album, to set it up. And then uh, a lot of people ask, do you come up with the song title? Uh, do you come up with a record title at the beginning or the end for us it comes at the end uh and that's something you know that normally you might have two or three four different names and we laugh at two of them or three of them and then at the end we pick and uh, it just kind of fit truth killer and with the song uh a lot of times different songs you know we different albums we don't do a song title and the album title but this was kind of fitting so it was fun to do it yeah, I mean, I just want to say that it's a great song. I, I can't wait Thank for you. everyone else to hear it, too. Cause I, and, okay. and to your point, like, yeah, that uh, that first song seems a little out, out of the box for you guys, I guess. But, I mean, you guys have done stuff like that over the years, too. It's not like it's oh, brand yeah. new. And, yeah, it's well, not I brand new. It's new. It's, I, well, no, I, I will say it is brand new because it's a brand new fucking song, and it's a new production, and it's a no, brilliant song. But I get what you're saying. It's brand new to start the album out like that after right. you've been gone for so long. And everybody's like, and I know people are listening to it uh like oh man, this is this gonna be the whole album? Or is this kind? Of, is this gonna suck? You know, <laughs> <laughs> is that is that well, what you had in Orlando? Is that you guys yeah, just looking around and so everyone just going? Now that's a good what question. Are they gonna think? I, so I was watching from behind the scenes. Super Dave, great, we love him, Orlando. Uh oh, Orlando guy, uh, our brother, the DJ, was hosting the night, 
And he comes in, he kind of hypes everybody up. And they had chairs sitting at, at this beautiful club called the Abbey. And uh, they had everyone sitting down. And he started it up. And uh, the devil might, might let the devil win start it. And I kind of peeked around. And you see people kind of, you know, doing this right here. And yeah, scratching their head. Looking kinda around like, okay, this is, scratch, this is a cool vibe. but Kind of scratching their head. And you having a drink or two and looking. And then all of a sudden it kind of gets heavier and heavier. And by the end of the song, everyone's standing up, clapping and talking. And so and that happened for both nights. But the first the first night they were sitting down when it started. The second night, they were all standing up from the first, from the start to the end of it. And it was really cool to watch and to see the response to all the new songs uh, for the few select that uh, got to hear the album before anyone gets to hear it. Uh, and the excitement was very, very cool. And I was very happy about it. I left there with a smile on my face and continued my vacation very happy. <laughs> That's great. And it's always good to see that. Like, uh, I know that there's some other songs that I want to get into, but I know uh, Sam wants to jump in here. Oh, and, no, and I talk just about a couple. Th that first song, I, I think, you know, John, Johnny can uh, attest to this, but it's with the, the today. Everyone just releases these singles and kids just like listen to one and go on to the next. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the you set a good you guys as a whole set a good uh, storytelling by starting with that. I feel like it's kind of like a, a play. If anything, it's, it's prepping you up and takes you on a journey, which I thought lent well, but I got to say fence is dude. When I heard that, I'm like, this is going to be a rad song live. Is that what like you guys kind of envision? You talked about let, how you were thinking about that earlier, man. Uh, let me tell you, you nailed that. You just nailed that question. So fence was one of the last songs we were working on. Me and John were in, up in the studio last that song was so Seven Dust original that we were afraid. Vince was at the end of the album. It's one of those songs where it's like, are we gonna? Is this song gonna? Make, is this track gonna make the album or not? Or are we gonna put something else in replace of it? And Elvis came in and said, "You guys would be crazy not to put Fence on this album." And sure enough, uh, we said, "You're you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. It's, it's definitely original Seven Dust, and I think this is gonna be a banger for the crowd." And sure enough, before playing it in front of people we got you know they're like hey you guys want you guys need to do a video uh, we're not ready to be and i don't want to i don't want to be in a freaking video right now man give me we just signed a record deal they always who wants to see us man Fuck. oh let's take it easy is there any other way we could do something else and uh we got this guy to come up with the claymation and man we fell in love with this concept and it turned out to be something i feel nostalgic they brought us back to that uh, uh, swim TV, you know, uh, death lock and all that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Celebrity, celebrity death match and everything. Yeah, like yeah. That. So it just brought us yeah. back to that. But I like to do like a series of these type of videos. But uh, anyway, it was uh, very fun. And so with that song, I, we found out that once we went out with Alter Bridge two and a half week, for that two and a half week run, we put Fence in the set, man. And these people go crazy. The video's nuts. Our lighting director is now... Uh, been able to sequence the lighting from the video uh, the same with the live performance. So it's a really cool effect. If, the, cool. if they've seen the video, they they can kind of uh, they they know immediately that oh my god, he's doing the same thing. Uh, and and kind of you know sometimes you kind of move around. We look like that claymation stuff up there with the lighting and the strobe lighting and the the vivid colors. So it's real fun. But yeah, man, Fence was a a very fun song to record. And uh, just in, initially, that's one of those songs that I call a banger on it. That that. Nah, 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 I mean that's coming in hot and uh yeah. it's fun to play and uh, it's going to be fun to do this summer too. I look forward to it. Yeah, man. I want to talk. We got to talk a little bit more about that video though, because that video, <laughs> yes. like, yes, we yeah, were both texting each other like, "This is fucking awesome." Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> it's so good, and, and and it does have that nostalgia. I think, I mean, it's the perfect one for that. I I, I totally hear you on like, how many times are we going to do these performance videos? They're fun and everything, yeah. but like yeah. everyone knows what we look like at this point. You know, oh, been... there, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, I mean, you still look great. I can't believe you're fifty years old. Congratulations, Whatever. by the way. But like, I'm like me, man, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to act in these videos, man. Because normally, <laughs> half the time in the videos, it's not enough acting to be considered a good actor, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I do. Yeah. I do. I look at movies. Not I've been these in a days, man. Movies. You got to go back to like when we started doing music videos at the, the hey. end of like early 2000s, and the yes. end of 99 was the last heyday to have any kind of real concept. Concept, video. exactly, man. Like, don't you remember? Was it? What was it? Uh, was it the Tom Petty video when he had it? It was like uh, Mad Max. Was that Tom Petty? Was that a uh, or was it Tom Petty? Tom Petty, Petty had Tom Petty had the Alice in Wonderland. Well, the Mad Max back was to California that. Love. No, 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 yeah, no. It was Tom Petty or either not Dwight Yoakam. It was somebody like that. No, but he had the 
they drove up in the old Mad Max cars and stuff, and the video was incredible, and they were in the tent. And it just rem- anyway, it just reminded you of Mad Max. So anyway, sorry, but yeah, those videos back then, like you said, had some type of it made you fuck. What about Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney? Say, 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 oh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> they're you know they're the snakes the snow they selling the snake oil or whatever back in the day and it was yeah that was like watching a freaking movie any friday night videos well, came michael on. jackson i mean the ultimate music video is thriller of course that yeah. is a mini movie all right think about think about us watching friday night videos as kids and just being glued to the tv because those were mini movies you know it was oh, like yeah. if you thought about it after you thriller you were scared to death but you know what i mean you thought about the videos and stuff it was <laughs> i showed i showed my kid thriller when he was about two years old i was i didn't think anything of it you know i know yeah. it's a little scary but i was like oh maybe he'll get him you know i like horror he he seems yeah. to like my tattoos and everything yeah. like that so but uh i showed it to him without the wife around and uh, i got in trouble for that <laughs> one <laughs> just like that's like me uh my little son uh, and my kids they gravitate I'm a, I'm a horror fan fan too they love like the lost boys one of my favorite movies in the world yeah. uh I got yelled at. I didn't realize it, but uh, I found one of uh, my old CD, uh, DVD uh, books. And it was in my son. He has, still has a DVD player. And we were doing something. The wife was downstairs. And I was like, oh, man, Chucky 3. I was like, oh, man, he's not, he knows about Chucky. We even called one of our friend's kids Chucky. So this is going to be fun. So I put this Chucky 3 in. And I remember my wife screaming. And my son saying, oh, my God, Daddy. And I ran upstairs and Ashley's like, why would you let him watch this? And I said, it's just a Chucky. She's like, yes, yeah, Chucky 3 uncensored. Like, <laughs> like straight, straight black market. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you, start off right, though. you can't watch it. Where did you get this at? Well, I think we were all raised different, though, because I remember right? in the 80s, I, I was like about four years old the first time I saw Nightmare on Elm Street. You know? Oh, like, yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. The Exorcist? Predator was my favorite. I remember seeing that as I was like six years old or something, and it wasn't appropriate, but still to this day, that resonated with me, and I love Predator because I, you know. Oh, oh yeah. I it remember. goes back to the nostalgia that you, that you were talking about with the fence video, too. I, I don't want to mm-hmm. go too far away from that because yes. I do think it was great, and I want everyone to mm-hmm. check this. If you haven't already, check out this video because uh, you're right. It, it brings up all that nostalgia, too, and it's the perfect song for you guys to do something that would bring nostalgia to you, to you right? I mean, that's that's kind of the era of yeah. when you guys were starting out with, like you said, like the original Seven Dust Sound and stuff where Absolutely. Sam was pointing it out before how it was, it, it was, you guys have always been heavy, but there was always this grunge element to it as well, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. That's something I think that, uh, you know, it's just it's fun to uh, always kind of stay on that avenue, but it's all right to go down different streets and evolve as artists. And we are, we're not getting any younger. And uh, why do the same thing over and over again? We have these beautiful platforms to be able to, to do different music and, you know, oh, man, and explore and do things. Music is, an, and is a beautiful thing to be able to be a part of and to still, if it's the word to use, to be relevant and to have this opportunity to still go out and for people to to to, to want to see you and and to want to listen to your music and want to hear it on the radio and and uh and, and all those things that are supposed to be happening for us in this industry it's a it's a blessing to be a part of it man and i uh i hope the best for all of us artists that are out there that are trying to do it in the right way and that are genuine to the craft and uh i only expect it to be better and to to, to get bigger and bigger for us again uh, i feel like there's a movement that's going on that that is just kind of brewing uh, and people don't really realize that it's a movement, but it's definitely a movement that's uh, the music is coming back. Uh, and we all are coming back. Dude, I'm glad you pointed that out. Cause as you were saying that, I was thinking about that too. A lot of new artists too. And a lot oh. of uh, artists like ourselves have been around who are expanding, <laughs> you know, and the new artists mm-hmm. coming out are doing some really cool shit. Like for yeah. a long time, I felt like there was some, I was always, maybe I was just cynical because I still thought I was a new artist, but like, mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> I would watch it. I'd be like, what the fuck are these guys doing? It's the same no. fucking shit over and over again. <clears throat> Tell you something that's interesting that you say that. So I get off this tour with Alter Bridge and stuff and normally don't want to go see a band or anything, you know, just even after not being on tour for a long time, but just, just that, you know, I want to come home and, you know, decompress and be at home with the family. Yeah. And the first thing concerts, the family said. concerts almost every yeah, night for the past couple right. of weeks. Right. I don't want to go to a concert. <laughs> and the kids are talking. They're all excited. And the wife's like behind them and stuff. And, I said, what concert do y'all want me to take you to? Uh, my daughter was like, Bad Omens. Oh, yeah. And I said, what? And they're like, Bad Omens. We love them. And I was like, 
I like that band. I know a couple of the songs. Took them to the show. They loved it. Didn't get to meet the band, but talked to them during, during DMs, and they were, they were surprised that we were there. Loved the fact that my kids loved it. They loved the band Sleep Token, which I love that band too. Yes. Don't know those guys, but I think what they're doing is very innovative, you know, very cool. And they're not being afraid to go from being heavy to melody and mm. the changing up and these guys actually singing and, you know, and then still being heavy. I'm like, I'm this is this is what's happening now. It's not everything is like, oh fuck it all. You know, it's not all that. All that, you know what I'm hey, there's and a time and place for it. We still, we still have a place in our hearts for that, LJ. I know you. Yeah, do too. exactly. <laughs> we, still, we still have it. We still, we still do it. We still get down with that. But you know, it's 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 a, it's a good thing to let us breathe and let let these folks sing and have this voice and have melody and have song that you can remember and sing. You know what I mean? I like I like to. Uh, to be able to go down the catalog and be like, man, I can sing that song for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh -huh. But yeah, a lot of great, a lot of great artists doing some yes. cool stuff. And yeah, it's so cool. And then you guys are, uh, we talked about ultra bridge. You got that tour coming up in mm -hmm. August. And then you guys just announced, uh, another tour was well, uh, static X, right? How crazy dope. Uh, we'll dope. open up seven dust and static X. Well, funny thing about it is Etzel dope. Uh, we have not performed together for 24 years with that band. But over the course of all these years, me and Etzel have stayed friends and have done a lot of work behind the scenes. <laughs> a lot of things that you would laugh at that we have done projects on. Like I ended up years ago, Etzel called me up and I did a song for the National Hot Rod Association. <laughs> oh, sick. You were you gotta so look he, he mentioned a few of these things. So he was on the show last oh, year. Oh, wow. And we were talking about some of his stuff that he was doing, uh, you yeah. know, behind the scenes, dope and everything like that. Uh -huh. I don't know if he mentioned you being you being a part of, uh, of a couple of them there, though. So yeah, was it the I did. Hot Rod one he was on. Uh, I did that. I sang. Uh, he ca called me in, and I did that. I changed up some stuff with it, and I did the National Hot Rod Association song. But then Ansel also called me up uh, because the Atlanta Falcons years ago uh, needed a song, and I we went in and I wrote uh, Falcons on Top. And then brought Seven Dust the band in, and we did a video for it right in front of the stadium and all that stuff. Had the Atlanta Falcons cheerleaders in the video with us. Uh, and the funny thing, one of my very good friends was uh, one of the captain. Well, if you call it a captain, there was a cheerleader, the third pro. But it was Alicia, and uh, it's now Alicia Taylor, which is Corey Taylor's wife. Was oh, a good no friend of my back. <laughs> so she's in that. This is a true story for all you guys out there that are fans. So she's in the Falcons on top video with us, and she's one of the cheerleaders. And it was funny. We're in this uh, rented tour bus outside the stadium waiting to do the video and alicia and the chili just come show up and of course we're all looking at these Atlanta falcons chili because they've been in their videos this is great man and they're outside and they're doing the they're doing whatever they're getting ready to do for the song and i was interested and i was like wow i know alicia i'm gonna go ask her i was like dang how long did it take y'all to learn how to do the routine for this she's like oh honey this ain't nothing she's like oh, we're just doing the same routine to living on the prayer it's kind of the same beat and i was like what and she said, oh, halfway there. Uh, and it was Falcons on top. I was like, it sucks. <laughs> God, damn it. I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> now I got to hear that song later. <laughs> yeah, now yeah. I got to I mean, that would have gone under my radar as a Raiders uh, fan. Because yeah, I know you said you like all football. I like all football, too, but yeah. I'm a diehard Raiders fan. So Right yeah. on, man. It was so, so funny. But that's a true story. So anyway, so Etzel's been a friend for a long time. And we ran into each other uh, a couple of a couple of years ago in Sherman Oaks, I think that's where it was at, and I was working with Sahaj from Raw on my solo stuff, and that's what came in and was talking about Dope and some other projects that he had going on, and uh, we laughed and said, man, it would be really funny if we uh, got to tour again together, and we said we would make that happen, and sure enough, we made the call. He got, I got the call, and me and Etzel talked before it all kind of went down, and I think this is going to be something that's going to be really nostalgic and fun. Uh, and, and to pay homage to, to Wayne, which was a, a great performer back in the day. And what they're doing now is really incredible. And the production on this is going to be crazy. And I'm excited about, you know, just having a good time and uh, co-headlining. So I like to be able to, you know, do a little set, have a good time and 
watch some somebody else's set, and possibly be at your local Applebee's or fucking Fridays by the fourth song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, LJ's fancy you know, like Applebee's for sure. You know, you know what I mean, man? You know what I mean? Hey, guess what? If you want to go to where all the fine girls are, you still go to Chili's. <laughs> uh, that was like the best line in, uh, what was that movie? Uh, uh, Sam, help me out. You're the... Um, hall Pass. Hall Pass, yes. Oh, a, they, I know yeah. where they got ass on tap. I know where they got ass sometimes. <laughs> yeah. When they were in there and they were like, he was like, man, this place sucks, man. And he said, I, and they stood up and uh, he said, let's go where all the fine girls are. And they were like, where? And he said, Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Chili's. So good. <laughs> so good. I love that movie. God, yes. What a yes. great movie. <laughs> Have you have, have either of you uh, married men in the in the in the room here ever gotten close to a hall pass? Speaking of, oh no way, not me. My oh, wife no would. Well, she. I well maybe by now she'd probably give me a hall pass, but it'll probably be, <laughs> give me a reason to kick. It'll probably give me give her a reason to kick me out. <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? No, I definitely <laughs> I never. Watched that movie tomorrow. That's definitely a fictitious movie. Like, right. I don't yes, know. it is. <laughs> I did. Uh, but you know what? I have a, a movie director friend that always, still to this day ask the weirdest questions i remember one time i think i almost i didn't know if i was going to get in a fight with him or my wife or even just him asking the question he's like you remember that movie with robert redford and i'm like no what movie i think that's what he said it was he's like you remember when the guy offered his uh wife a million dollars to sleep with them and i was like oh god yeah I where remember are you going that. here <laughs> i remember that i remember that movie and it sucked what uh what's uh, what? and he said proposal what? Yeah, oh yes! Yeah. Oh my God! I hated her in that movie. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I just remember him asking that question, and me and her looking at each other, saying, "That's a weird question." I said, "Would you do it?" And she's like, "No." Would you? And I was like, "No." Would, but would you? It's just one of those kind of things. Like, <laughs> I don't know. If you I say, mean, a million dollars. Honest, say, are you being honest? Dollars. And no, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> a million dollars. I don't know. I, <laughs> I couldn't let it go. I couldn't. Oh, no. I, mean, I, I might be mad at you for like two or three weeks. Come on, let's go. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you been together for that long? Like a, a little tiff for two, three weeks is is not a big deal. Yeah, How long have you been with true. your lady? Oh man, me and her are going on like twenty years or so now. Nice. Yeah, it's been a long time. But I robbed the cradle from a long time ago. Uh, she showed up at a show here in Kansas. And uh, her sister was there to see the band El Nino. I remember that. Instead of yeah. instead of Seven Dust, but uh, <laughs> they stayed to watch because uh, they stayed to watch us. And I saw my wife in the front row, and I saw these beautiful blue eyes. And for some reason, I just knew that she was going to be uh, someone I wanted to hang out with. And I had my head of security go down, and I, I noticed him giving her passes. And I saw my wife say no, and he came back on stage and said, "Hey, boss." It's my fifth song, and he's like, man, she don't want to have anything to do with it, but her sister does. And I said, well, go give her the passes to the sister and get them back and see what they want to hang out. And sure enough, they came back, but I had a, a base, another baseball buddy of mine, uh, was it Jason Crimsley was out at that thing, and they knew who he was, so it was cool. They wanted to meet him, and so they came back, and I kind of courted her. I was also, I brought her on the tour bus, and uh, I said, hey, you know, I, I have this friend that works for a record label, and uh, they just signed this band, and I really like them, and i like for you to hear them. And that was my way to get in the back lounge, but I wasn't being a creep. And it was Maroon 5, and I was really in to this first album, and I was like, this is a great album. Room. Dude, yes, I remember hearing it on the radio in the van. I was torn, too, hearing that, yes. that song's on the van, man. Yes, man, and I said, this band is going to be huge. And from then on out, man, that band, you know, that, that first album has been, you know, something that kind of reminds us of those times together. And uh, after that, we kind of courted for a year. Ash, how long have we been married? How long have we been together? I, I was right. January, 20 years. I'm normally wrong. <gasps> hey, you might need to give me some <laughs> Oh, on he that. got points. He got points. You, might need, I, you might need to give me some on that. <laughs> <laughs> So no, no, I ain't going to be yeah. that easy. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. That's awesome. Well, you got a, a range of, uh, you know, you talk about Maroon 5. We've talked about, uh -huh. it seems like you're all over the place. What's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, man. I, man, I'm not good at karaoke. It, I feel like I sing it wrong or it just doesn't sound like maybe I'm so spoiled about being in the studio with my band. Karaoke versions of the song always sound different to me. But if there is a karaoke song that I'll do, uh, 
It'll definitely be like something from the Isley Brothers, Summer Breeze or something like that. Oh, also, man. I got a funny story to tell you guys. So we went to the lake this uh, past, we were down there for a week, and we go to our favorite little spot called Chevy's. It's this little dive, hold it all. They consider they have the best hamburger in the world, and it is, it is pretty good. It's damn good. Anyway, the other day we go in to get the best hamburgers in the world to take back to the condo, and there's a DJ in there. Never seen this guy ever before, and he looks like a country dude. He looks like he probably has a six shooter, and he would shoot you if he need needed be. He puts on this beautiful cowboy hat, and there's only probably two other people in the bar, and uh, he be begins to play uh, R and B music. And I was like, "This is cool." He's played Charlie Wilson. He comes over in his cowboy hat and he's like, "If you don't like Charlie Wilson, you got to get the hell out of here." And I was like, oh, that's awesome, man. We love Charlie Wilson. That's hard to see you playing it, but whatever. And he starts going back, and he's like, I'll start performing in uh, about 30 minutes. And I was like, what are you going to do? He's like, I, I DJ and I sing, too. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. But as he's walking back, he starts singing over the R&B music with a very deep country voice. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen anything like it. It was the coolest thing ever, the funniest thing I've ever seen. After that, he starts his show, and immediately... It's only me and my best friend and his wife and my wife sitting at this table. And he's got this little bitty Janet Jackson microphone thing around his head right here and his big cowboy hat on and starts beelining towards our table because he's singing a song. He said right before he said, he said, husbands and men, I just want to let you know I'm not here to take your wives. And then went on and then fucking pushed the button and started walking towards my wife and was like, darling. If you hear it, don't want to leave with me. I mean, we're singing. <laughs> That's awesome. He tried to turn around. He tried to do it without the million like, dollars. Oh, my God. It was the best <laughs> thing ever. Second song around. They went over to the bar to get us drinks. And my wife went by herself. And he stood up. And I was like, Ash, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> 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 you cannot make it up. She's oh. like, can get over here. Get over here. Hurry up. He's coming. <laughs> That's so but good. it was fun, man. I'm sorry, but we had that was a good time, and uh, it, it was really cool because I told him I was going to come back to see him. But it, the camaraderie of him being a musician and me being an artist, and it was just brotherly love. You know what I mean? It was just really cool. <laughs> I want to hear this. I want to hear this yeah. guy. I want to hear this shit. I have. I took video of it. I could send it to you. You would die, man. Yes, it was please a, do. It was amazing. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see a little bit. Now I got to yes. uh, which lake is this at? This is Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, where they filmed the big show and stuff, all that stuff. But anyway, it's a beautiful time. Uh, it was really weird. This 4th of July, there was nobody on the water or anything. So uh, for about a good week, uh, me and my buddy took the sea news out. Probably we'd get up about 630 and hit the lake at 7 and have the clearest, smoothest rides and just had a good time. And took the boats out and had the family out on the 4th of July and watched the fireworks show and grilled out on the lake and, and brought them back in before 930 at night, my bedtime. So uh it was a it was a good trip, man. A, a lot of fun. It's awesome, man. I, I got. I mean, do you think it's because they're worried about the drug cartel going up and down the lake? There is that why they're not coming out there anymore? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that could be the thing. <laughs> oh, they, they're all at Shorty's, a strip club that I've never gone to. That's that's weird. That's somewhere deep in the lake somewhere. <laughs> why haven't you been? That'd be like the first place I'd go. I gotta, I I gotta check we, that we out. We talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time. People got GPS on us and stuff, man. Uh, my buddy's like, man, they'll know if we go to Shorty's. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny just found his new stop when he he's in that area on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There he's you gonna go. have to show me along, and I'm gonna be like, "We're going to Shorty's, yeah. dude." Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, the other night, we the Earth, Wind, and Fire played around the corner from us, and I, I didn't know it, but uh, I thought that was really cool that they were out there in the Lake of the Ozarks, and I believe Shine Down is getting ready to come through there too. So uh, they have some cool bands that you know kind of show up down there. That's cool. That's cool. I saw Earth, Wind, and I didn't see them when we were in the Poconos. We we missed them. They were they were at the. You have been to the Mount Airy uh, Casino out there? Oh you no, know, no venue venue out there. Daughtry went through. I know you. I know oh, you did a couple songs with Chris a, uh, a couple years oh, ago. Yes. He just um, faced team pocket face Tommy just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, yo, Chris, Chris. <laughs> oh, no. He pocket face. He pocket face Tommy, and then had the nerve to face Tommy back. And said, did you face Tommy? I was like, no, you face me. <laughs> That's the play, though, if you're going to do it. <laughs> he's looking at me, looking at me on his FaceTime, asking me if I FaceTime him. I'm like, no, you just FaceTime me. I was like, look where I'm at. It was uh, actually 
we were sound checking for the acoustic set at the listening party. I'm like, I'm on stage right now. We were dying laughing. Everybody said hi to him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was in, I think he was in Canada or something getting ready to perform. So, uh, so yeah, Chris, he's been a long time buddy of mine, man. Just a, a solid brother since day one, since the, uh, the first day that we, uh, actually met up. I remember we played some big radio festival and my bus driver said, Hey man, uh, there's some dude in the front of the bus with some mirror shades on, you know, have a shirt on, got a big old tattoo on his back that says Daughtry. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> You just yeah. think he was a fan of Daughtry with a tattoo? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Oh man, that's, that's Chris. <laughs> that's funny. The bus driver was weird out. He's like, Man, it's weird. I don't know what's going on, man. Some shades on that. <laughs> He's got the shades on his shirt off. Yeah, and he was ready to party. Exactly. I like it. Exactly. <laughs> and man, it turned out to be one of the best brothers ever. We're still tight, man. It's, but that's a true story. <laughs> a how million years of, ago. <laughs> how did that Temple of the Dog song happen between you guys? Man, uh, Chris called me up and uh, said, hey, man, would you be interested in doing this? And of course, I'm a Chris Cornell fan and loved it. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I kind of did that. You know, uh, that's, you know, I did I did a jam already. And I said, I don't want anyone, you know, coming at me thinking I didn't do a good job. So I got to do... I didn't get. To, I got to do the Eddie Verder, Eddie, Eddie, Ver, Eddie Better part. So mm -hmm. I just recorded it. A buddies of mine out here in Kansas, and uh, we made all the proceeds go to the homeless. And it was just a fun thing to be a part of, and just that legacy and that and that Temple of the Dogs album still to this day is something that. Uh, and Chris Cornell, at, at first and foremost, is uh, someone that I still look up to, and I think that. All artists can look up to him as a as a legend, a legacy that uh, will continue to 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 to, to just uh, just continue to grow. And that album was definitely a very deep part of my growing up. And I still listen to Hunger Strike and all that stuff. Uh, just those guys together, they did something special. And I just thought it'd be cool to do it with Chris too. And it turned out really fun, even though we didn't get the chance to perform it together because unfortunately his daughter uh, lost her life on that tour that we were on. Mm -hmm. uh, right at the very beginning of it and everything shut down, which was understandable. And right. so hopefully in the future, you know, hopefully in the future we'll be able to make that happen because it's there. The song is there, you know, and it's always going to be there. Yeah. And you guys, you guys killed it. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, Thank, yeah. Thanks, man. It was, uh, it was funny. I was like, Chris, take it easy, man. I just do that part at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did your own cover of, uh, of Soundgarden with uh, oh, the yeah. to live too. So you, you got both spectrums of uh, yeah, it was, that Eddie was and thing, man. We were on that uh, we were on that album, uh, the album that we didn't get to tour because of the pandemic, and we were talking about doing a cover, and it was so many different ideas. I, I even think somebody came up and said, "I think what was like, why don't we do My Sharona?" I was like, "I don't even know what that means," and no, I'm not singing that song. <laughs> uh, first off, so, so it was like, <laughs> does anyone know what My Sharona means? I don't know. I think exactly. I was just I my, I just remember my dad like singing it uh, in a parody for him, talking about his itchy scrotum. My itchy scrotum. <laughs> yeah, that's I know that. I know I'd rather sing that part of it. So anyway, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it got down to the wire, gentlemen. And uh, I remember Elvis coming in and calling us in the studio. was like, man, I got it. The day I tried to live. And I was like, hey, that's a great song. Who's going to sing that? And uh, <laughs> they, they all laughed. And, oh, man, it was like, man, you'll nail it. And I was like, no. And Johnny, you guys, Sam, I promise you I didn't get sleep for a few days. It was the last song on that album I recorded. And I said, I can't beat myself up and try to go in and sound like Chris Cornell, that would be ridiculous. And I didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to do that anyway. And so what I had to do, I had to do as a man, I had to go inside myself and I thought about me being a man, his effect on my life and his music and what he did to me and his inspiration. And I feel like a lot of the soul that I try to, to, to come out, I try to, to learn from Chris Cornell and, and, and emulate that in some of my stuff growing up too from the past. Uh, I thought about all those things. I thought about his family. I thought about him being a father like me, like us. I thought about his touring cycle, the things that he went through, his mental health, the reason that he did what he did, the effect that it had to have on his family, the effect that it had to have on him even after he did what he did, watching what is going on. And then I went into the studio and into that room and turned the light off. And then I sang that song. So that's mm. the emotion that I felt was all that heaviness. And uh, so that was that was the way I did it. So I didn't want to sound like him. I wanted to sound like me. And so I felt like uh, it was really heavy that in that moment. And that was it. I recorded that, did it in one take, unplugged everything, 
said, thank you, Elvis. I love you. And flew out the next morning at five o'clock <laughs> <Damn, laughs> and waited man. to hear it. Yeah. That's and incredible. Waited with, one take. Yeah. I was on very that. happy after. Yeah. It was, but you know, I couldn't think about it. Couldn't think about it much. Just had to think about everything that he had to feel and just those emotions and just, you know, and that song. Wow. And how ironic that I think about that song, the day I tried to live, you know, and just to think about it even now to this point, what he was saying, bit, you know, a little goosebumps going on. When you yeah. Know, you know, yeah, yeah. Just think about that, man. No, it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's real, yes, man. That's heavy. Yeah. And, and if anyone knows about that type of stuff and knows, sorry, it's not enough. It's you brother, you know, and, and then the situation that God dealt with you guys and your, your family, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? And you know, the feelings and the emotions that that type of stuff brings up. Man, man. That's heavy. You kind of channel it. You, I mean, that's that's amazing. You're able to channel that. Almost go into, I don't know, uh, what, what what do they call that? Uh, almost method sense oh, yeah. it and, and kind of be be a rod or a beacon in that, and kind of put your own thing on it. Oh. And as I said, you, you absolutely killed it. I, I find it funny though at the beginning of that story though, you being like, "Who's going to sing it?" Because uh, yes. <laughs> Because, I mean, obviously, we're, we're both big, and most people who know anything about music know how incredible Chris Cornell is as, a, oh. as, a, as, a, as an artist and a singer, of course, mm -hmm. too. But, man, mm -hmm. you don't sell yourself short, LJ. You're a fucking phenomenal oh. singer. Oh, and like, that's thank like, you. I, I, love the, I love the humility in the beginning of that Thanks. story, I, I, I will say, or in the, the entirety of that story. There's a lot of humility, but, man, just don't sell yourself short because you're, you're nope. one of the great ones, man. Oh, thank you, man. That means a lot to me coming from such an uh, incredible artist and brother, man. It's, that means the world to me, man. So, uh, yeah, man, I just went in there and just did it with my heart, just like I do everything with Seven Dust and anything that I, that I do, I have to do it with passion. And a lot of times I, people always come up, man, well, I don't think I can sing. And I always laugh at people. I'm like, man, you know what? You can, as long as you have conviction, as long as you mean it. I said, you, I listen to a lot of singers. I was like, you think Willie Nelson's voice is really good? I said, you know what I mean? But I said, he means those songs. I said, uh, you know, you think about a lot of, the, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, you know like on the road again, I just can't wait to get on the road again. I mean, I mean, he means it. You know what I yeah. mean? Oh, fucking then, Dylan, you know, one of the greatest songwriters of all time, fucking Bob Dylan. When he I was going to say. It's like, like fucking, but it, it's got a vibe, man. Like, as you know, it's, the kids want to talk about vibes, like. Listen to these listen it. to these singers' vibes. It's not about there you go, vibes, man. It's, it, it was real, uh, man. Jim Croce, all those. I mean, I can uh, all those songs. It's the songs. It's the idea of the stories behind them too. You can just sit down and it's so picturesque. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's what I like about songs. And I hope that uh, we're in like you guys. I hope that we still continue to write and create that art that way, where you can sit down and that song take you to a different place. You know and what inspire, I mean? And, uh, and inspire. The yeah, story and inspire. Telling. Yeah, and it's, it's storytelling, and that song comes on again 10 years from now, and it's like, God dang, you remember that summer, and that song was popping, and it's still popping now. That's what I like for music to do, and I think our music does that. You know, we're very Absolutely. blessed to do I, I was just telling Sam before you came on how, uh, after I listened to the new record, I was like, man, I haven't gone back to a Seven Dust, like, like discography in a minute. Like, I, I hear when you guys uh, have new singles and stuff coming out, but... <laughs> I went back and listened to Denial, which I was like, I, I hadn't heard in a long time. And I was like, oh, yeah, this was like <laughs> fucking shit. Like, in, oh, man, in like 99, 2000. That was like, yeah. <laughs> I remember that on MTV and everything. Oh, and I was like, yeah. The, yeah. I was telling him about a performance. I don't know if you remember. It was, I think it was on MTV, too, where you guys did a live performance. Uh, and we did one years after you guys did. But I remember watching it in high school. And it was my first introduction to Seven Dust, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it was on MTV, but it might have been on like one of the other cable channels. Yeah, we too, did but... MTV. We did Farm Club with Matt Penfield, David Letterman, all those things. But uh, yeah, MTV, we did that too. Uh, let's see. It was like a Matt fuller Penfield. concert, though. It was like a fuller it was a con concert. It was like it was like it was like several songs. It was just you guys in. Oh, like it was a at theater. the Metro in the Metro in Chicago. That's it what was it like was. A, yes, yeah, it was yes. MPK video. Yeah, it was great. We did that. That was fun. Let's see. Uh, I was going to tell you something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the other part of that story I was going to tell you? Something. Yeah, Matt Penfield. The Farm Club. You remember that? Did you guys ever do that in Hollywood? No, I never did that. Oh, my God. It was this crazy thing. I don't even know how long it lasted, but you should look it up. So it was this cir circling around, the staging around or whatever. And the, uh, the band would be here, and then the band would be here. I think we played it, and then three days, three doors down, played it, and it spin around. But anyway, the day that we were there, in the dress rooms upstairs, the third act that was going to play was 
Destiny's Child, and I went in the dress room and I met Beyonce and all of them. Oh <laughs> shit! Whoa. Only one I cared about was Beyonce. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big deal, though. Man. That's that fucking awesome. it was, yeah. We were young. It was a great. It was a big, big deal, man. It's, see, anytime did you take we a went picture? to Hollywood, wait, wait, wait. did you take? Did, did you fan out and take a picture, or what? Or was it more like took, were you trying to play we, it cool? We played it cool, but I remember we took pictures. I forget. Maybe we had flip phones back then, or what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I remember her acting like she knew who we were. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, really, right now. But it was definitely Destiny's Child. And that was so fun. Anytime we went to Hollywood, it was always funny. I remember uh, playing uh, the uh, Jay Leno. And he would always pull up in some kind of crazy car. And I remember the night that he drove his, what do you call it, the the motorcycle with the jet engine, the Rolls Royce jet engine. Oh, and yeah. uh I don't know what you call it either. I've seen, I've seen, you seen I've it? seen some stuff though. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. We were there, and I remember after the show, he was getting ready to leave, and our car was there to pick us up. <laughs> and my bass player Benny Hornsby, we were sitting by the car, and we were watching Jay Leno, and Benny always smokes a cigarette. He was like, and he's smoking a cigarette, and Jay Leno lit started the bike up, and Benny was like, "Damn, that's a loud bike," and it was like, <laughs> and all these, all these flames i mean fumes gas fumes from like a jet and Ben was like it might be a good idea if i put this thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't get too close man don't get too close <laughs> all, all i remember it was like being behind a jet and he's smoking that cigarette it might be a good idea <laughs> <laughs> so casual took, i love i love how casual it was so it was casual it. but jay leno had told us the story earlier that day someone had I think somebody in a Honda Accord or whatever kind of car it was pulled up too close to him and he burnt, he melted the bumper. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, shit. So it was, it was a, a true story, man. So many good stories in California. You guys have a crazy place out there. <laughs> did you, yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to Dave uh, Letterman at all or was he kind of just passing? We, or? No, uh, I talked to David Letterman, hung out with him a couple of times. I Actually, through David Letterman, I got to meet Robin Williams and actually exchange phone numbers with him no years way. and years ago. Rest his soul. Uh, we were actually on a show with him being there. And, man, uh, you can definitely tell that he was in party mode back then when we met him. But the fun thing about it was I loved his shoes. And he was so excited about me liking his shoes. He told me about the designer that made his shoes. And he's like, well, here's my numbers. You got to call him. He's going to make them for you. And he was going like, I was like, oh, my God, this is like him being on. It was like Mork and Mindy. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was uh, an experience. Didn't, didn't have an off mode, yeah. huh? Didn't have an yeah, off exactly. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, yeah, it was party mode. It was like Rick James. But uh, it was funny. David Letterman was really cool to us, man. And each time we did that, it was a. Uh, it was an experience for me. I'll never uh, forget that. We did Carson Daly too back in the day. I remember me and the wife were dating back then when I took her to Carson Daly. And that was a fun experience too. Uh, those days are, I don't know if we do those kind of shows anymore. Unless you, you know, it's funny. You're in the Saturday night studio, but you're not on Saturday night live. <laughs> so, yeah. Dude, I, I, we've, ne we've never done anything like that. So, I mean, we did really? TRL. That, TRL is like kind of our only performance on like a show that, that we've done. That, so. that, man, TRL was huge. What, what happened to the days of MTV really playing videos i wish that would come back man and no, it was so watch, much fun. you gotta watch mtv classics to, to yes. <laughs> you gotta have it on yeah. your on mtv classics the only time it's yes like, but i throw it on every once in a while for my son because i'm like you don't understand like you gotta yeah. watch it like this <laughs> you know it's funny man last time on that tour with uh maybe not alter bridge but the animosity tour we ended up playing uh new york city Times square and it's not called the playstation theater anymore it's the nokia theater i think it's called or maybe they've even changed it but you played there it's right there uh, bubble gum shrimp and all that stuff's right there, but you don't realize it on the very top of that building, same building. That's where everyone did TRL. Yeah. That's the, yeah, it's still the same building. When we get there, everyone's like, oh my God, you're right. I'm like, yes, we still have a friend that works up there. And until the last time, I didn't remember it because she put a post up and said, I guess I'm going to have to go downstairs after work because Seven Dust is down there. And I looked at it and I was like, she's upstairs in the freaking offices. They still are up there. So, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Remember those long lines? And I remember going up and seeing, being up there at TRL one time and just being amazed with everything that was going on and looking down at everybody. And what a great time in our lives back then, man. It was so different. Yeah, it was a cool stage up there, too. Like, the, mm -hmm. they had a really rad setup with being able to look right down onto Times Square, everyone with their yeah. signs and shit. Like, it felt like wrestling to me, too. Like, that was yeah. like, it was like a little bit of like a WWF or WWE uh, 
event without everyone holding up their signs Man, and everything. What a great experience for you as an artist to feel that love and passion. And then being such a prominent New York City and, oh. and to have that going on and exactly. anything could be going on. Like it's so much to happening there. And then everyone's there for you and to adore you and love you for your I mean, that's just a what a what an incredible feat, man. So proud of you guys. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Then, <laughs> never kind of a whirlwind when you think back yes. on it but it was it was a lot of fun man we were young absolutely. it was good it was young mm -hmm. it was fun yeah, absolutely. <laughs> young dumb and full of whatever they call it stuff. <laughs> i got tons of names for it now i don't yes. know <laughs> <laughs> hey man you guys this has been really cool this has been definitely uh one of the coolest things i've done and that room man whenever i have to come you have to invite me to the house i'm, I'm sure absolutely it's fucking sweet, man. I would love to see it. It's a fun You're room. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely be. Yeah, right when after you guys I come think through. you get off, John. So, yeah. so that, might, that might work out good. Because you're doing definitely. Uh, October, I think you're coming through. Yeah, time, so. we'll, we'll be coming through there. Yeah, oh man, uh, that's Halloween. Uh, funny story, I did an interview with uh, Full Metal Jackie the other day. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. like, I'm going to be I'm gonna be doing that show uh, at the new Anaheim House of Blues uh, on Halloween. I was like, oh my God. I said, maybe 20 something years ago, I had a really close friend that worked for the Hollywood costume shop and uh, she used to always send me costumes. I'm just a, a, a nutbag. I'm a weirdo. And uh, she uh, said, we need outfits for the uh, the concert at the Anaheim House of Blues. And we all dressed up like Elvis Presley. And it was the coolest night ever. And I'm thinking about doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, dude. Why not? Elvis is El Elvis is going crazy again after that movie came out a couple of years uh, ago. So, you know. Oh, yeah. It's good. And I've always <laughs> it's relevant been Elvis. <laughs> yeah, I've always been an Elvis Presley fan, you know, since day one. So it might be something we have to do again. But what a fun night. We each had an Elvis Presley outfit on. And we went out there and jammed the whole Seven Dust set in the Elvis outfits and rocked it. <laughs> that is so much fun. Oh, that is so much fun. Bring that back. Bring that yes. back. Yeah, I'll be around, though. Like, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll cross paths. I got to look at all the tour dates and, and mine. Okay. I don't even well, know our tour dates. Sam can, Sam can attest to this. I was just yeah. talking to him about it. He's going on with himself. You're My probably the same way, LJ, man. Yeah. I don't pay. I'm like, I know where I'm, when know. I'm leaving and when I'm coming home. I don't exactly. know where I'm going to be. Man, now. I had a question. Did you guys just play Madison Square Garden with Living Color? Yes, we did. Man, how was that? Congratulations. Jeez. Thank you. No, it was it was it was amazing. I had a great time uh mm -hmm. just walking around that venue, you know. We we went in for a sound check cuz you know, this is our first few shows back and mm -hmm. uh we have a couple new crew guys so we're like, okay, let's let's make sure we get time to sound check. And I don't know if you remember uh New York unions and everything like that. Everything gets pushed back, put in like, <laughs> building the stage, building the stage, building the stage. About 10 minutes before doors are supposed to open, we finally get to sound check. But I only tell that story because I had all day waiting around for it to actually tour Emma, uh, Madison Square Garden. I'd never uh -huh. even stepped foot in that arena before. Oh, wow. So I Like before doors are open, I'm going to all the suites, every door that I could open, every mm -hmm. picture I could take of all the famous things that have happened there. I mean, yeah. It, and it was so great because it really set up the vibe for like yeah, for you there. to perform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our first time ever. You know, they got Billy Joel's banner up there, 138 wow. sold out shows. I'm like, Jesus Christ. No that's way. What? See, now I've never seen that. That's amazing right there within itself to see that and think about yeah. him being there 38 times. 138 times. Oh, no, 138. There. What? <laughs> he has played there 138 times and sold it out. And uh, Harry Styles just went through there last year, I think, and he did 15 uh, yeah. nights in a row sold. Out are there. you serious yeah man like there's some uh, legend there's some legendary shit and the living color thing was such an honor for us too because mm -hmm. they uh they had reached out at some point to booking or management and we're like hey you know we're, we're we're fans and we've never been able to play uh madison square garden we're right mm -hmm. we're from here this is where we're from and we've never played mm -hmm. madison square garden and we'd love to go there and do that with you guys well well guess what we've never played madison square guard either let's go do this together it's gonna be fucking amazing wow, i snuck man. out I, I put my hoodie on and snuck out to the front of house and watched a few huh? songs and, oh man it was it was so rad i'm, I'm a big fan too so i was oh, i was too. walking around when i was when i was walking around and and i had my airpods in i was listening to living color the whole time i was like they're about to be on stage here no way too. man and i was like this is fucking sick yeah we had a, we yes. had a blast that is crazy. Congratulations to that, man. That's definitely something you. you never forget. I love Corey and them. I uh, performed Cult of Personality <laughs> with Corey and a Living Color on Ship Rock one year. And oh, sure. was was the n most nervous I've ever been on stage. I couldn't believe 
that I was going to do it. And I said, I agreed earlier in the day. And I was like, maybe they won't come get me in my hotel, my suite or whatever with the wife. And she's like, it's going to be fun. They're going to do it. I'm laying in the bed. I'm like, they're going to forget. It's not that important. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. No, unfortunately, really I wanted, I didn't even get a chance to like, to meet any of the guys either though. Oh, like, really? on their show. No, like I was like, I was looking around after the show, you know, they have that, oh, man. they have this Delta club room where like everyone hangs out with after we're mm -hmm. like, VIPs and stuff. And I was looking around for them the whole time and they were already gone. So I, I hit up oh. my management. I'm like, dude, you got to hit them up. We got to get, you got to get them on the, on this show and talk about that, their experience there. Too. Yes. So, the, fingers you crossed we can make that happen. You definitely, Corey would love to, man. Uh, and at that night we played, so I get on the, well, I get backstage and the funny thing, Joy, uh, singer from Anthrax, Joy is uh, so funny. He's a, a fan of Seven Dust and Living Color. And uh, he's back there. He's like, man, I can't believe it. It was like two teenage boys. And I couldn't believe it. It was so funny. I still tell this story. Joey's sitting back there and he's pushing me. He's like, man, I can't believe you're going to go do this. Go do it. You're going to do good. And I'm like, I don't want to, man. It's going to suck. He's like, no, go do it. I can't believe you're going to do it. And we're laughing like little schoolgirls. We're pushing each other. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and he's pushing me. And I'm like, stop pushing me. <laughs> Yeah, I still pop. They, yeah. played it. They, they played Cold Personality that night. Like they they closed up their set with it, and I was oh, yeah. just like, "This is legends, awesome. man!" You know, fucking they toured with the Rolling Stones, and you guys got to play with them on that that setting, man. I'm just so that's cool. just you can't you put a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I def I definitely partied a little too hard after that night the, in celebration, and you know, I wish I would have been there with you, my brother. Yeah, <laughs> no, we'll we'll get back to it. I'm just like I said at the top. I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to it. Just I, I like to recalibrate everyone's hey, hey, I've, hey, I've done it a little too much you know <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that i do the same thing man i just uh i just had my this whole this whole summer vacation i was riding the sea and driving boats so i had to kind of take it easy <laughs> yeah 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 you can't yeah, yeah. I, I totally hear you on that you don't want to be too fucked up out there on there yeah. they, they'll, the they'll catch you right they'll catch you riding dirty they definitely see me standing out they're like oh, i look <laughs> yeah Look, mm -hmm. catch we you see riding dirty. Oh my God, I know, I know you see me. I'm I haven't heard a chameleon out. reference in so long, man. I yeah. love that song. I'm like, I'm the only one out here. You know it too. What's up? Let's get <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking this awesome. This tour sucks. <laughs> hey, man. Let hey LJ. Uh, I'm gonna let you go now. Uh, okay. Been awesome having you. We're gonna stay in touch after this. Yes. I will. Uh, I will send uh, Kevin my number. Hopefully, you guys can get it. Uh, we could get each other. I'll, be, now what? I'll, I'll send you a text through my through Kevin and everything. And thank you. God bless you guys, Sam. Thank you. And you guys have a great weekend. Take care of them babies. And this has been the best, Johnny. And I love that sign back there, too. Thank you, man. I can't wait for you to see it in person someday soon. Bro. We have a couple of drinks. Yes, thank sir, man. Let's talk again soon, bro. All right. All right tell everyone we hit settle up. Later, man. Well, that went what awesome, great, Sam. What a great chat. What a great dude. Uh, I was really hoping I'd kind of heard him before and man that guy's just so positive it's always fun talking to people like that just kind of get you up leaving leaving you on a high you know so yeah it's always it's always good to be around positive people it makes you feel better you know and i hope people get that when they're listening to this too you know we try to keep it pretty positive and you know and you know i have fun with it we get, we get into a couple serious things but you know it's life doesn't have to always be serious you know we can also have some fun with it and just stay positive because we're all here doing the same shit, right? At the end of the day. So, I mean, I love I, I love talking to LJ. That was great. After having having seen him in like ten years, and just like just comes just the the rapport just came right back. You know, I was like I was like, oh okay, like yeah, this is my old buddy LJ. Like this isn't this isn't anything like uh, just a guest on the show. You know, like someone I haven't met rather. Yeah, so, uh, it was really fun. Well, that's cool. I know. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, he's on. I'm, I'm excited to uh, hopefully maybe sneak out and go see him when he comes in the area because <clears throat> I think I might have saw him at like OzFest way back in the day or something, but it I, I don't remember. But all I hear whenever I hear Seven Dust is how amazing their live show is. So I got to go check it out. Oh, they're incredible. Incredible. I think it's so fun to hear uh, LJ talk like, oh, man, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. He's like one of the best fucking singers right? out there. And I'm like, and I've heard him for years, like just kill it. And I'm like, Come on, man. Come on. You can't that just that shows home. you what a nice, humble person yeah, he is. You absolutely. Know I mean? so. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Super fun. I definitely got to uh, get off here in a second and check out their dates a little bit more closely. Everyone else should, too. They got the they got everything happening in August and then October. Hopefully, uh, while I'm out or while I'm home, we cross paths and, and uh, we can share a beer and, and, and shoot the shit some more. Great. 
Yeah, man. And uh, the album comes out. Great album, everybody. Again, just got to plug it one more time before we end here. Truth Killer by Seven Dust comes out July 28th. Uh, me and Sam have had the pleasure of hearing it before you. And I uh, have to say, it is a very good record. Make sure you go check that out. Definitely. All right, man. Uh, well, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, until next time, as always, cheers. Cheers.